When it comes to athlete training load, there is internal load and external load. But do you know the difference between them and whether we need to collect both? I'm Joe Club, Applied Sports Scientist, and today my Sports Science Insights is focusing in on training loads. External load is defined as the work completed by the athlete. And this can be a whole array of measures and variables. It can be physical work done, such as distances covered, acceleration, deceleration, and these movement kind of metrics. But it can also relate to more technical aspects of load demands like uh, bowling balls or throwing or pitching. Now this external load is separate to any internal characteristics of the athlete. And that brings me on then to internal load. Internal load is defined as the physiological or psychological stress imposed internally to the athlete by that external training load. Now, if you want to come back to these definitions or dive a little bit deeper, this paper, 2014 paper by Shona Housen, Monitoring Training Load to Understand Fatigue in Athletes, is a fantastic overview of this area. And this is the paper from which I've taken those definitions. So clearly based on those definitions, internal load and external load are capturing different aspects of training load on our athletes. The external load focusing on that physical work carried out. The internal load being that physiological internal cost to complete that work. And actually, not only do we want to really capture both internal and external load, but we want to capture multiple measures within those areas because they are complex constructs. And so unfortunately, not one single measure can fully encapsulate each of those areas. So not only do we want to attempt to capture both internal and external load, but we want to capture multiple measures within those areas. And that is known as a multivariate approach. So for more on this need for a multivariate approach, that is the need to collect multiple variables to represent a measure, I'd recommend this paper also open access by Dan Weaving and his group. I'm just going to scroll down here to a portion that I've highlighted where it describes that physiological systems are complex with many disparate factors affecting the outcomes of training. Every bout of exercise imposes specific physiological, biomechanical and psychological demands, which vary not only with the prescribed dose, but also with the mode, so the type of exercise. And therefore, it is unlikely that a single independent variable will be able to capture this complexity and provide a valid measure of training load, either internal or external and consequently a holistic representation of training load has been suggested. So in measuring these training loads, which are trying to quantify the dose of training that our athletes have been exposed to, of course, we may have interest in particular measures, be that total distances or accelerometry derived player load measures. But it's important to remember that no one single uh, measure like this can fully represent external load. So here we have a simple matrix of different training load dimensions, how I like to think about it on a really simple level. So we've got our internal and external load measures, but then we also have objective and subjective methods, methodologies of capturing this information. So the most commonly employed and thought about perhaps would be objective measures of external load. So ways we are objectively quantifying the work done. And perhaps we use a tracking technology such as GPS for this. Internally, 
heart rate is a commonly employed objective measure for internal load. And then when it comes to subjectivity, we can use methods such as RPE to get a subjective understanding. Now, to capture internal load from a subjective perspective, we can ask the players their RPE. And I have a video coming up soon of all about RPE, so keep a lookout for that. And then perhaps a way that we can try to capture the external workload from a subjective perspective is to ask the coach what their RPE for the session or their playing group would be. It's not perfect perhaps, but I think for the sake of this, it gives us an overall understanding of these different types of dimensions. We can then start to explore the relationships between these different sources of information. So the relationships between internal and external load, for which generally we see a strong association, but it's when these relationships start to diverge that can be particularly insightful. Now, I'm gonna talk about that a bit more in a future video, but one other point I wanted to make on this is that those relationships may be different between different athletes, particularly if you're working in a team sport environment. So here is a paper that demonstrates those differences and the need for an individualized approach. A paper from IJSPP led by John Bartlett and I just want to scroll down to something it says in the results. They use this neural networks, artificial neural networks to investigate the relationships between internal load measures, so RPE and external load through GPS in Australian football players. And although they generally found that session distance was the most predictive metric of RPE in 36 of the 41 players, that wasn't the case for all their players. There were a handful of players, three players where high speed running was the most predictive metric and two players where meters per minute, so an intensity measure, was most predictive of their RPE. So here again, we're seeing in team sports that we need to appreciate and account for individual variation within our squad. So quick recap from today, external load is the work completed by the athlete regardless of any internal characteristics. Internal load attempts to capture the physiological stress imposed on the athlete. These are different constructs and yet we want to measure both, but we also need a multivariate approach. So we want to capture multiple variables in each of these areas. Keep a look out for my upcoming videos exploring these relationships between internal and external load. And if you're enjoying the content in my channel, then please subscribe and I will see you again soon.